we're back with Yusef L. Now, he has a very convoluted process, so I'm having to break this down bit by bit for you because uh, you wouldn't believe how many hours I have to go through and sift through his bullshit to get to the nuggets. So anyway, I'm bringing you one of his foundational beliefs, and it has to do with uh, being in court. And uh, you're going to find out that, uh, well, let's just let Yusuf himself tell us what he's about. Your Honor, is this a civil or criminal case? This is a criminal case. Thank you, Your Honor. Let the record show that the action being brought against the defendant is a criminal action. Now, sir, I got another question for you. The Constitution for the United States of America only grants this court two criminal jurisdictions. Okay, wrong, Yusuf. You have just flunked, you dumbass. The Constitution you're talking about addresses federal courts, not state courts, and the Constitution recognizes state court jurisdiction in the 10th Amendment. You brag a lot about how intelligent you are and how you know more than attorneys, and you don't even know the basics of how this country runs. It runs on federalism, meaning there's two government sovereigns. There's the federal government, and they have their jurisdictions and courts and separation of powers, and then there's the state governments who have their judiciary and their separation of powers. And the Constitution recognizes statutory jurisdiction of the courts, state courts, in the Tenth Amendment. And you're going to get uh, schooled on this as uh, judges are going to school you as we go along. Oh, by the way, somebody's written a song about you. Listen. One is under the common law, and the other constitutes a condition of contract and the criminal aspects of a colorable admiralty jurisdiction. Now, sir, would you please tell this court and myself under which two of these criminal jurisdictions this court is trying this criminal action? Y'all come up with all kind of bullshit. Y'all say statutory jurisdiction. It's under the Constitution of the state. That's right. Tenth Amendment, doofus. And are you ready for the song that somebody wrote about you? Hold on. A whole bunch of other bullshit. You're a dumbass. You're a dumbass. Yes, sir. You're grade A, number one, bona fide first class. Yes, you You're are. You're a dumbass. You hear it, Yusuf? You're a dumbass. And you'll be one all your dumbass life. Now we'll go into the courtrooms where Yusuf's script, and you'll notice these people are reading off the pages. They're not even looking at the judge or listening. They just read along. And this is what Yusef tells them to say. He's got it on his uh, website where you can download this script. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here uh, by special appearance, and I will be representing myself. Okay. I'm required by law before I accept that waiver to do a couple things. One, advise you of the maximum penalties that you could face for the charges that you're in my court for. Resisting obstructing conservation officers is a high court misdemeanor punishable by up to two years in prison and or a thousand dollar fine. There's a habitual offender second notice that's been filed by the prosecutor, which would make that a felony punishable by up to three years and or a thousand dollar fine. <clears throat> and marine safety operating while intoxicated is a misdemeanor punishable by up to 93 days and or a 100 to 500 dollars Do you understand the maximum penalty for the for the charges against you? Well, I don't even really understand why I'm here. I don't understand the nature and cause of the action against me. So I what is it that, that you don't understand? Do you not understand how long three years is or how much the fine is that I've articulated? Can you tell me what it is you don't understand? I don't understand the nature and cause of the action against me because you don't establish jurisdiction. You have to establish on the record first that you have jurisdiction. That's been okay. questioned. It was questioned in preliminary hearing. It was never addressed. I'll address that today. Well, it has to be addressed before anything can move forward, obviously. Okay, so you want me to explain to you why I have jurisdiction? Yes. Okay, let, let's you do that. Jurisdiction first. Jurisdiction itself. <clears throat> sure. Okay. This court has subject matter jurisdiction over crimes punishable by more than a year as, a, as the court of general jurisdiction of the Michigan Constitution of 1963. The people voted uh, to ratify that Constitution. That is the that is the uh... you notice the doofus isn't even listening 
He's, fi- he's flipping through his script to find out what to say next. Uh, underlying law of our sovereign state of Michigan. Okay, so is that a jurisdiction under criminal? Um, or is it no yeah, charge? Yeah, it's a criminal charge against you, and I have jurisdiction over that. Okay, so the Constitution of the United States only grants you two criminal jurisdictions. One's common law, and one is military tribunal venue under Article One, Section 8, Clause 17 of the Constitution, which of these two criminal jurisdictions is that? You're not in federal court. It's not a federal crime to charge. Boom. There you go. That's the bottom line. You're not in federal court, and you haven't been charged with a federal crime, so those federal things you're quoting have no bearing whatsoever on your case. Boom. You've been charged with violating the law of the state of Michigan. So, common law. You're, you're in a state court. Yeah, you got that, Yusuf? You're in state court. God, this guy thinks he's smart. You're charged with violating the law of the state of Michigan. And that, is that a statutory jurisdiction? What is it? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a statute. It's and, a, okay, uh, so. and, and, this, and, and this court is duly authorized under the Article 6 of the Michigan Constitution. And the Tenth Amendment of the United States Constitution. So that's my jurisdiction. Okay. So now I need to make sure that you're establishing your your right to represent yourself. So I have another question because um, the statutory jurisdiction doesn't exist under the Constitution. So in order for me to tell you to defend myself, could you please tell me where the published rules of conduct are uh, for a criminal statutory jurisdiction, or, or where I can find the nature and cause of this jurisdiction, or how this information exists? No, I don't even understand what you're asking. So you're saying this is a statutory jurisdiction under what, the statutes of Michigan, correct? Mr. McLeod, I've told you what my jurisdiction is. Okay, so when enforcement of mere statutes, judges of all courts do not act judicially and are thus protected, thus are not protected and qualified by women in the That's Owen versus the city. I just want to state a few things for the record since you're claiming this is a jurisdiction under statutory law. Hang on, hang on. Mr. McLeod, can we back up? Look, look at me for a second. Can we talk here? I, I, I challenge subject matter jurisdiction. Nothing can go forward until that's addressed. You're saying I did address it, and I denied your objection. I have subject matter jurisdiction exists under the Constitution. Your objection is noted. So I'd like to state for the record that Mr. McLeod, stop. The court can be stop, Mr. McLeod. If you don't understand it, I'm going to revoke your right to represent yourself and have an attorney represent you because. Boom. <laughs> Now here's where they get their ignorance thrown back in their face. Because I can't establish that you know what you're doing. Um, I've challenged this court's jurisdiction. You haven't established it yet. You said you have a statutory jurisdiction which doesn't exist under the Constitution. I'm trying to figure out where I stand with this. So I, I can't answer any of your questions until you answer some of mine. That's not how it works. Are you refusing to answer my question? No, I'm I'm, I'm Then saying... answer it. If you want to dig in your heels and just make this real complicated or real difficult, we could do that, and I can hold you in contempt, and you'll go back to a jail cell for a while. No, we're not, we'll I, don't, I don't wish you to be held in contempt. I just wish you to exercise okay. my Sixth Amendment right. That's fine. And so I, before I can, I can cite, let I you under, I can, I, can I, can... Laws, I can cite laws that will, will, will show you that the, the exercise of a right can be converted into a crime. I'm trying to get, understand the nature and cause of the action against me. You're not clarifying enough to where I can comprehend it, as you say. He doesn't have to. Comprehension is up to you, dude. It's not up to the judge to walk you through everything. He has met his responsibilities as a judge to inform you of the nature and cause of the charges. Just because you're too stupid to grasp it is not his problem. Do you comprehend the maximum penalty that you would face? I'm, I'm not answering any of those questions until you establish that this is a court of the Constitution has jurisdiction under these jurisdictions. I established it. I told you. You might think I'm wrong, and you can appeal There's it. There's no such thing as a statutory appeal. jurisdiction. Uh, let me make this simple for you. Sure. I'm going to ask you this question one more time. One more time. Okay. Two things are going to happen. You are either going to answer my question, or I'm going to hold you summarily in contempt, and the court officer will bring you to a jail cell and we'll talk about it tomorrow. You understand so, that? So, Mr. McLeod, for Mr. McLeod, two things are going to happen. You're going to answer my question or you're going to jail for summary contempt for not complying with the court's request. Do you, Mr. McLeod, understand 
that the maximum penalty for the charge against you is three years in prison and or $1,000 fine. I don't understand the charges. I don't understand the charges. Mr. McLeod is contempt of court taken into custody. Really? That's it. Boom. There he goes. And he gets a little bit of the song, too. You're a dumbass. You're a dumbass. But wait, there's more. I ask, what jurisdiction is this civil or criminal? This is a criminal case, which points out the fact that you could use a lawyer if you can't tell the difference between a civil and a criminal case. Criminal case means you could go to jail, in this case, for up to two years. In a civil case, there's no possibility of jail. It's usually over money damages or other types of non-jail relief, like other types of non-jail relief. So yes, this is a criminal case. Well, thank you. So um, you said the record is on. Yes. Could the record of the court show that this is a criminal action? And my next question is, I know that the Constitution grants the court two types of criminal jurisdictions. One is criminal jurisdiction under common law, and the other is criminal jurisdiction under admiralty or military tribunal venue under Article One, Section 8, Clause 17 of the Constitution. Under which of these two jurisdictions is the court intending to try me? This is statutory jurisdiction of the law of the state of Michigan. It's not any of those things, including the wacky admiralty. Boom. <laughs> There's your admiralty, Yusuf. Uh, clause people try to invoke. This is criminal jurisdiction uh, authorized by the state legislature uh, here in the state of Michigan. Thank you. Well, please let the record of the court show that the court intends to conduct a criminal action against me under a statutory jurisdiction. But that makes me wonder. I have never heard of criminal action under statutory jurisdiction, and there is no such jurisdiction established in the Constitution. And I will be able to proceed if you can show me where I can find the published rules of civil procedures under a statutory jurisdiction and where this nature, cause, and jurisdiction exists. It is crucial that I have the published rules of procedure so that I can conduct a fair defense and fair trial. Otherwise, this needs to be dismissed. And I would like it in writing, please. Thank you. It's not Thank civil you. procedure, it's criminal procedure. And the defendant doesn't come up and show, court, tell me why I get to do this. You've been charged under the criminal statutes of the state of Michigan, and I've just advised you of that on the record. And do you wish to represent yourself? Thank you. I do. I know I can peer for myself. I'm competent, and I am confident. Well, you may be confident, but you're not competent. <laughs> Okay. All right. So I wasn't completed with what I wanted to say to you, please. Okay. May I? Thank you. So I wanted to say that I don't believe it's a violation of your oath of office if you did your duty under the Constitution because I'm seeking legal intent. Okay. So I have the right to peer for myself in order to intelligently defend myself. I have to know the jurisdiction this court is operating under because the rules of civil procedure under common law jurisdiction are very different from the rules of civil procedure right, or military stop. tribunal venue. Stop, stop, stop. You went through this before. I this know. is not civil it's procedure. It's the Sixth Amendment grants me the right to know the jurisdiction being applied. And I told you what it was. And it gives you the duty. All right, stop. If you interrupt me one more time, I'm going to find you in contempt and you're going to go to jail. Objection, please. All I right, please. Please. We're going to talk about I, this tomorrow contempt. at three o'clock. I find that you're in contempt. Well, she won the prize too. So there you see how one of Yousef's basic foundational tactics, scripts to go to court with is nothing but epic failure. 
So uh, he's got another uh, foundational thing. He thinks all crimes, I, even murder, is commercial in nature and that you can just discharge it with some negotiable instrument. That's it's really convoluted, but I think I've got down to the nuggets of it. I think you're really going to enjoy my video covering that. So once again, thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoy learning about where these soft sits get their ideas and getting into the mind of their guru because that's what I'm here for. I know a lot of people have played these videos, uh, but I try to approach it from an angle that uh, other people seem to leave out. So uh, once again, thanks a lot. I hope you do comment. Let me know what you think about these processes here. And uh, like and subscribe if you will, please. I don't charge you anything. I don't ask for money. So. Once again, thanks for viewing.